Amazing audience, we are live with Jimmy Colson. We are in the outer part of Las Vegas, right? The outside. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. We're out in, in nature's beauty. Yeah, it's beautiful out here, isn't it? Oh, most well, Jimmy, it's a great pleasure to connect with you. Pleasure connecting with you as well. I mean, Laura did connect us, so big up to Laura, yeah? Yes, big ups to Laura. I love it. <laughs> Definitely. Well, tell me, which of your talents is responsible for us connecting at this time? Um, I'm writing a book right now. Uh, basically, I was raised really poor by heroin addicts and was homeless on the streets and then turned it into a multi-million dollar prosthetic and orthotic company. Wow, now you did come walking with this. Yeah? Yes, most definitely. Here's, here's a prosthesis we made for the TV show uh, Shameless. <laughs> That's amazing. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, you can see it's pretty lifelike. Yeah, but tell me more. I mean, like I was wondering, right? I did see you with this. Well, tell me more. What, what well, did you do? we do everything from myoelectric arms and legs. So we make, uh, prosthetic arms and legs that are computerized. Uh, we're basically one of the industry leaders here, and we're the industry leader here in Las Vegas, Nevada. So. What's the name of the company? Uh, Precision Orthotics and Prosthetics, also POP. Shout out to Laura. <laughs> <laughs> so like, I mean, like, where did the business knock for uh, prosthetics really come in? Where did, where did you? Well, I was a painter um, making like $14 an hour and they offered me a job in prosthetics at $7 an hour and called me the monkey in the back. So I worked my way up from being the monkey in the back, cleaning the offices and everything to having the biggest prosthetic and orthotic practice here in Las Are Vegas. Yes, sir. Went from being the monkey to uh, pretty much doing, being the boss <laughs> in prosthetics. That's amazing. So I thank mean, you. Like, how does that work though? Like, how, where did you? Where did you come into the, the, the thought concept that I want to own this company? I always believed in myself. Even when they called me the monkey in the back, that put a fire under me. Um, you know, growing up really poor, I wanted to find something to where I was able to give back to the world, uh, a way of uh, changing people's lives. And prosthetics and orthotics gave me the platform to do such, a, you know, do, do good things in the community I'm in the world. I'm still fascinated though. you're working there and now you're the owner of that zone, right? Like, I mean, like, where did the educational aspect of it or the know-how then? I, I started off as a technician, so I made back braces for uh, spinal doctors. Uh, I never went to high school, uh, didn't go to college, but I have a four-year degree now. Uh, they, they grandfathered, they didn't have enough people doing prosthetics and orthotics, so there was a once upon a time thing where they grandfathered us into getting our degree. And I was one of the few gentlemen that got to <laughs> got to reap the rewards of that. Amazing. So who did you learn that skill of adaptability from? Um, from a, a friend of mine from high school. His name's Lee Reinhardt. Uh, he got me into the field and gave me the opportunity, and I took it and ran with it. That's amazing. Is there someone in your family that has a similar type of uh, ability to learn as you go and grow? Um, my, my little brother, Eli. Uh, he's, he's a go-getter pretty much like myself. Yeah. Uh, we just have this hunger for knowledge, uh, for helping, and you know, it, it, it just, I, I just want to, like, like Steve Jobs said, I want to leave a ding in this world. I just want to do something special and leave a mark and make a difference in people's lives. That's good though, because you have to be good with your hands, right? It's, uh, it's fascinating. You started as a painter, right? Yeah. It has to be a good with your hands and the muscle memory is pretty good, yeah? Yeah, yeah, definitely. The carpal tunnel came with the painting, uh, but other fine. than that, you know, <laughs> I, I have a hard time writing, so that's good. You know, I could do it all on the keyboard now. Why would you continue to be that guy that adapts as you go along, as you grow? Because that's life. You know, life is all about adaptation. You know, uh, basically transforming yourself into something better every day. I, my, my goal in life is to try to make sure that anyone who enters my life uh, is better for it. I don't want to I don't want to do wrong by anyone. Yeah. I want to bring everyone up with me. I love that. No crab in barrel. Right? Yeah, right. No crab, that's what we say, that. No crab in barrel. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. You, you, you want to make a difference in people's lives for the positive. I love that. Tell me one other thing. Well, before that, where's the best place for people to connect with you or even the book you're doing right now? Um, we have a website, Precision. Uh, actually, go on prosthetics.lasvegas.com uh, if you want to know more about prosthetics and orthotics. The book is almost... Uh, we're just done with the first draft and Laura's actually helping me through the rest of it. Uh, I'm, I got a little bit too much of the uh, bad stuff from when I was a kid and everything like that. So I got to clean it up and just, you know, give a little more inspiration to these people. Um, I want to make a difference in children's lives. I want to show them that you can come from the poorest to poor, like being raised by heroin addicts or living on park benches, and you could turn it into something special. As long as you believe in yourself 
you can make a difference in this world. Yeah, love that. What's one other thing you've done consistently over the last three years? One of the things that we've done consistently, um, try to help out. You know, in the community, we got uh, we got congressional recognition for what we do for the homeless. Um, uh, we give away shoes to homeless people. We we take uh, goods to homeless people. Uh, we just want to make a difference, my wife and I. Uh, What's your wife's name? Uh, Sarah Colson. Right, she's 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 the one who the pushes me. Yeah. She's the one that pushes me into doing better for the world. Yeah, she puts up with you. Oh my gosh, I feel for I feel for her, man. I feel for her. I'm like I'm like the Energizer Bunny. I wake up in the morning 5 a.m. and I'm like ready to go, and she's like, Oh my gosh, I need my coffee to deal with this guy. How does it make you feel seeing that now that you're in a place to help those that are home? How does it make you feel when you see that happening? Blessed. I feel, honestly, I got goosebumps saying it. I, I, I just feel that I can make a difference for them. Um, I didn't have that, and I want to be able to do that for other people. So and that's why I'm writing this book. I want to make a change in some children's lives. I want to give them that hope that I always had, but I saw so many of my friends fall through the wayside. You know, people dying of drug abuse or, you know, just giving up on life. And, and life is here to be lived. You know, live in the moment, travel, experience things. If, if you're not happy in your situation, grow from it, learn. Everything's, everything's put to here for us as a learning experience. You know, it doesn't matter if it's bad, good, or anything else. You learn from it and you move on and you better yourself. And that's how I look at all life. Love that, love that. Well, let's switch gears for a moment. Let me invite you now into my time machine. That you got is it. surrounded with beautiful, warm, blue, Caribbean water. Oh, I love it. What is your <laughs> earliest childhood memory? Earliest childhood memory would probably be with my stepfather uh, talking football when I was like three, four years old and helping him uh, choose all the teams on his parlay card. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's one of my earliest childhood memories. Why do you think that memory is so clear? I, it helped me become a football fan. I'm a diehard Pittsburgh Steelers fan because my dad sat me down at three years old and said, there's two teams in football, the Steelers and the Giants. Choose one and be a fan for the rest of your life. And I have been a fan my whole life. For the Steelers, yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Steelers all the way. Can you connect that memory to who you are today? Definitely. It taught me um, basically stick to Like, I, I was a fan through the hard years. I was a fan through everything. I believe that that was my closest memory with my stepfather and it helped me grow as a man. Um, you, you love something, you build on that and you stick with it. And that's what I did with that. I became a Steeler fan at three years old. I'm from Los Angeles, so that doesn't make any sense. But <laughs> I, I other team? What's the other team? Back then it was the Raiders, the Raiders and the Rams Steelers. back then. Oh, okay. oh no, but the other team that my father gave me a choice, he was from New Jersey. So he said the New York Giants or the my Pittsburgh Giants, Steelers. And I chose the right team. We got six Super Bowls. Can I offer an interpretation to the thought picture you created in my mind with that memory? Thank you. Can I? Yes. I love the idea of uh, football being a sport that isn't, uh, even though it looks like what you look like, <laughs> the you. strength, the strategy oh, yeah. is so important. So to see you take strength and strategy and put it oh, together yeah. and create what you've created, I love that. And Thank to see you. your father give you that, like the two sides of that, I love how that connects. It. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, strategy. I started playing chess in kindergarten. And there we go. Yeah, I, <laughs> I was kind of a prodigy when I was in the first and second grade. I was doing 10 digit by 10 digit multiples. You know, I didn't graduate high school, but it was because we didn't know where our next meal was going to come from. It was more important to figure out what you're going to eat than going to school. But, you know, I have went back to school. I've learned a lot. Um, tried to learn uh, Spanish as well. I've done some college. Uh, got my GED. So yeah. it is important. To, education is very important. It does. It is very important. But what you've done is even more important. Thank you, yeah, sir. Yeah, because you've used your skills and your talent to do what you've done. So that is definitely what I think you want to find. Yeah, you want to encourage that among oh, yes. anyone. Yeah, most definitely, yeah. especially the youth. You yeah. know, the youth. We're not all born with silver spoons or with with our whole life planned out in front of our our, our eyes. So we have to figure out who we are. We have to figure out where we want to go. And if you believe in yourself and set high goals and high standards, you're going to be able to get there. I believe in that. Yeah, well, you are a living proof of that, so that's great. Thank you. If Thank you, you. fast forward to when you were 12, what was your favorite song? Favorite song at 12 years old, let's see, back then, uh, Total Eclipse of the Heart by Bonnie Tyler. Yeah, definitely. Well, you definitely did a Total Eclipse. <laughs> 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 thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate that's it. That's amazing.
amazing. All right, well, we've arrived at our destination, but before we get off of this time machine, there's a small declaration form. So yes or no, we're going to move pretty quickly here. Are you ready? Yes. Jimmy, have you chosen someone to pass on your skills to? Yes. Are you married? Yes. Do you have children? Yes. Do you believe in God? Yes. Do you have an inner circle of friends? Yes. Do you watch TV for more than three hours a day? No. How about three hours a week? Yes. What about screen time, the phone and the computer? More than eight or less than eight hours a day? More than. If you had to share with us your own unique real statement, a statement that represents Jimmy Olsen, what would you say that is? Believe in yourself and accomplish great things. I love it. Jimmy, this has been a great pleasure. Thank you for being on what is inspired by Tours Minute Convos. Thank, Thank you for having us, having Ooh. me on. Is there anything else you want to say before we go? Is there anything else? I like this guy. All right. Well, <laughs> <laughs> Did you have fun? I had a great time. Boom. Boom. Love it.